Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. I'd like to nerd out to the science behind how we can keep our houseplants happy and to multiply them in our homes. So if you're into that kind of content, please subscribe to my channel and send me likes. So in my last video, I actually filmed myself cleaning up the balcony because it was so messy so I could make space for this setup right here, this table. So I finally done that and I have so many uh, plant projects, uh, whether it's propagation or rescue or just potting things up. Uh, that I will uh, take you along with me today to show you what I am doing with all these plants. And you're going to learn a lot about uh, propagation and plant care in this video. So uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the show. I guess we'll start um, right here with this uh, cuttings. It's <laughs> a lot of cuttings that have been rooted in water. And uh, I'm just going to pot them up. And I'm going to choose the right size pot and medium for those. Um, there's a Philodendron Brazil, a Brantianum, a Begonia. Uh, black velvet, uh, black magic or velvet, I can't remember, I'll put it on the screen later. Uh, one ZZ plant and a lot of uh, Peperomia clusifolia. So we're gonna get started with that. Okay, so I think I'm gonna start with this uh, begonia. It's starting to go limp by the minute. So I've had this out for about an hour because I went to have lunch. And it's, uh, yeah, it's slopping a little bit. So I'm gonna quickly save it. A lot of begonias don't do well with transition into soil. So, um, my, my previous uh, experience with them is about 50-50 chance. So I'm gonna give this one a this pot. And I, they need to be very, very fast draining because the begonias actually rot very easily in my climate. Uh, let me get. So I'm giving it a very, very airy soil mix. And uh, in here we have some bamboo shoots, uh, perlite, burnt rice hulls, some dry twigs. Uh, what else do I have here? A little bit of worm casting for organic material as well. So this begonia has been rooted in water for about, I would say, five to six weeks. And it's not a lot of roots. Um, it's quite slow to grow roots, but I don't want to wait too long because I know that they will not be able to adapt into soil if I leave it on for too long. Um, and I do know that begonias can be propagated directly into soil. So I could have also just stuck this straight into soil without going into water. Uh, but I, my success rate with begonias are actually quite low. So if any of you are experts at propagating begonias, <laughs> do let me know your tricks. And I'm going to do the next one. I can actually start to see there are like little baby growths on the coming out from the side. Um, I don't know if it, maybe this camera will show you better. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I can see that, but there's some cute little uh, green uh, growth from the, from the base. So I hope that's where the growth is coming from. And I guess I don't want to bury this too deep. Uh, if that's in indeed some new growth, I don't want to bury it. I don't want to smother it or, or drown it rather. Slowly put that in. I may keep this um, uh, one indoor and one outdoors, just so I, I can give them slightly different environments to, to live in. Oh, by the way, with all these cuttings, I, I have actually washed them with my own insecticidal bar soap. So the, yeah, they have been washed beforehand because I was actually getting spider mites infestation in my propagation channel, pr propagation station. Oh my God, my brain is fried. Uh, so yeah, so they, they have been washed. So I, now I know that they're gonna be pest free. I'm gonna do my Brantianum next. Yeah, I do feel like they've gone a little bit limp. I should have potted this up earlier, but I, I waited a little bit. <laughs> and I want a pot full of Brantianum, so I'm gonna put them all in one pot. And over here I have my trusted uh, Aeroid soil mix. If you guys wanna see my, um, my soil mix that I use, it's in my soil video, so do check that out. It's a, it's a very good video and I, I cover in great details um, the soil types. And for this, actually, I'm going to give it, because Brantianum is going to always want to climb up, so I'm going to give it a, a pull. And all these uh, types of philodendrons actually do very well with this soil mix. In fact, some of them, when I propagate it, I don't even go into water first. I just directly uh, put them into this soil mix to propagate them there, uh, when, especially when they already have uh, some kind of aerial roots. This one's already coming out with a with a new growth. I don't know if you can. See. It's putting out like a, a tiny new leaf here and roots. So that's cool. And you want to make sure that when you put your cutting, you want to put it on the right side up so the the new leaf can find its way up. You don't want to put it uh, upside down. But that's so cute. It's like 
It's like a little row. It's like one of those uh, theme park rides where they spin you around and round. <laughs> okay, I want to be very careful it's not to break the new growth. Very excited about this. I, I want a really bushy uh, Brantian and this is like clamoring up. And the way that I would have to treat this uh, newly potted cutting is that I have to water it very frequently at first, probably every, I don't know, every day or so. Just kind of uh, spray water on the top to keep the, the cutting moist, to keep the roots moist, never let it dry out. And then I will slowly back off with watering uh, as it reaches, um, you know, as, as an adult plant, it doesn't want to be in sitting in water. But I, I'm not worried anyways, because this, uh, this soil mix is so airy and it's so fast draining that it's not really possible to overwater uh, philodendrons or other aeroids that love to dry out between waterings. <laughs> so I will, I will put some insecticide, sprinkle a little bit of insecticide on top and some slow release fertilizer and yeah, it should take off. Uh, next, I'm gonna do the uh, philodendron brazils. These were heavily infested by the spider mites. In fact, I knew that the cuttings were in trouble because of these brazils, so they alerted me of the fact that there were spider mites. So I'm very thankful for that because they were in such decline, they turned yellow and there were spots, so I knew that they were being attacked. This one is a really pretty leaf. I don't know if you can see on there. It's, it's gorgeous. Look at the markings on these. And it's giving me two new growth points here. <laughs> How cute. Oh yeah, this is where they were branching out, I think. I can see the, the two branches. So there's, there's four leaves coming out of there. That's very exciting. And I'm gonna give this one... Uh, on the bottom, I'm just gonna give it a little bit of the aeroid soil mix. I'm gonna give it a moss pole. All-purpose uh, soil. This will also appreciate the uh, aeroid soil mix, but yeah, I'm just used to growing my pulsos and my easy philodendrons in these uh, general potting mix, and they don't have to be watered as often. So I'm gonna give this a pole only because I wanna see it climb up. I've seen some huge philodendron Brazil leaves out there. So I'm gonna have to put this, put this in a very open place where it can get uh, well-rounded sunlight. So maybe not against the wall. And I've only got two cuttings of the skindapsis. And what I'm gonna do is that since I have so many skindapsis cuttings all over the place and, and plants, I'm gonna just stick this to an existing skindapsis uh, pot. I'm gonna put this away. Yeah, so I'm gonna just like uh, poke a hole. You can use a pen or anything. Uh, put the cutting in and just bury it and you're done. <laughs> that simple. Uh, the cuttings that are in here actually, they were not propagated in water. They're, they're from the same batch of propagation. I think about, I don't know, six to, six to eight weeks ago. Uh, this particular skindapsis, which has got a lot of silver specks on it, it's very, very slow to grow and very, very slow to root compared to the more greener form. But as you can see, even though there are some damages to the original leaf, uh, new shoots are forming. Uh, so you can propagate them in water and you can also propagate them straight into soil. So that's that. Oh, by the way, sorry. Skindapsis, actually, I'm, I may actually give this one a moth pole too because I do want uh, one of my skindapsis to, to climb up and uh, they can get bigger leaves. So I, I don't see a moth pole. I'm going to do that later. I'm going to just stab the moth, moth pole right in the middle because there's room here. Uh, now I do have one ZZ plant here. Uh, some of the cuttings are actually already done. I potted them up, but I forgot this one. So it was left out and uh, it's ready to be uh, potted up. And I'm going to give this a terracotta pot, which uh, dries up pretty fast. And I'm going to give it a, I guess, a general purpose uh, potting soil. In case you guys are wondering, ZZ plants take about six to eight weeks, maybe even more, to root up. And then they take a lot longer to start giving you a new shoot. So uh, some, some people say that propagation of uh, ZZ plants take up to like nine months just to get a new shoot, the first uh, new shoot to come out. So that's a long time. That's why you should propagate your ZZ plants now. Just do not wait. So next I'm going to do um, the Peperomia clusifolia. And I'm actually going to try one in Lekka. <laughs> I've got this set up ready for, for it. I'm trying most of my plants in Lekka just to see what they're, if they will survive there. Uh, I mean, it's not really my favorite setup. I feel like it's a little bit unnatural and uh, 
I'm a bit worried about the nutrients and all that, but a lot of the plants seem to do well in NECA, particularly Hoyas. And I've noticed that if when you have a, a glass vessel like this, it's better because you can see how they're doing. You can see the water level in there. Uh, I, I used to have them in like an enclosed pot and I couldn't see the water level. In there. And bring, that brings me in a lot of anxiety. So yeah, let's see if this cutting will do well in uh, Lekka. Very cute. For the rest of the Peperomic Clusifolias, I'm actually going to plant them in here and maybe some in, in this pot as well. These baby leaves already, how cute, when they're, they're uh, water propagating. Uh, yeah, so I want to make sure that these babies are facing face up. They're facing up, <laughs> sorry. Oh, whoa, 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 okay, I just made a mess. Oh god, I hope none of the cuttings are, <laughs> are destroyed. Okay, so... We're gonna continue with the rest of the cuttings. I'm gonna jam this into one pot. It's gonna be tight and it's gonna be a beautiful bouquet of Peperomia clusifolia. Okay, I think I am done. Very nice. Let me show it here. Okay, this is the poly Peperomia polybotria, uh, raindrop Peperomia. And what I wanted to do is, I don't know if you can see from here, is that it's not bad. But I want it to be super bushy and crazy. I want it to be like, 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 like a lot of like these uh, raindrops. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this. And with Paparomias, you can, um, let me show you, you can cut it by on the leaves, like just having one patio, or you can cut um, the main branch with a few leaves on it, with no more than two, I would say. I'm going to cut this off right here. So that's one cutting. Let me show you right here. So that's one Paparomia cuttings and I'm going to do another one, right here. Snip. Uh, what I can do is I can put this in water and wait for it to root, or in this case, because I already have so much propagations, uh, and my next propagation project is going to be uh, Hoyas, just soon. I'm going to do a lot of Hoyas. Uh, that's a new spoiler for you. So I'm, I'm going to keep all the other propagations out of the way uh, to make sure that I have room for those. So I'm going to just stick this straight back into the soil where it came from. And there you go. Now, from two plants in this pot, now I have four uh, plants. So hopefully that, that's going to give me like a huge, crazy, like, <laughs> bouquet of Peperomia raindrop. I have this like, cute little pot of uh, neon pot, neon, philodendron, so this is philodendron neon, or lemon lime, I'm not sure what it's called. But from this tiny little pot, as you can see, there are actually so much growth coming out of it and the growth are healthy. So this proves to you that you don't need a huge pot to have a lot of growth on your plant. The plant doesn't need that much space. But uh, I am going to move this. I'm going to combine this with this other um, similar species because I have too many of them all over the place. I, I just wanted to combine them so that they can be cared for easily. I'm going to carefully take this out of this pot. And it is, uh, let me show you here, it is not even that root bound. It's not even that root bound yet. So it could have stayed there. But yeah, I'm going to combine this with the other cuttings, I, I can see here that the roots are actually very, very thick, which means, which goes to say that they don't really need to be watered very frequently at all. They, they can, they, they're capable of storing water. I'm use this pot. I'm just going to use the original media too. And as you can see here, there's a lot of this. It's like vining, right? So I'm going to actually uh, bury the vines into this pot so that all the nodes are gonna turn into roots. So this means that this plant's gonna grow so fast when they have so much uh, roots in there. Rather than lead, if the other option would just be to let it hang out like this, but then you only have a small area that's rooted and the others are just gonna be one long vine trying to find something to root onto. So this is why I prefer to just jam it all into the pot, let the leaves stick out and let the nodes uh, root. Perfect. Yeah, how nice. Look at that. From one, from those two tiny sad looking plants, now I have a fuller plant. So this is going to be insanely crazy soon. And next I'm going to do this philodendron, uh, actually Gabby. It's not, it looks like a, it looks, looks like the philodendron Brazil, but it's got a cream. So it's got the yellow uh, variegation, but it's also got a cream white stripe in some of the leaves. So um, I've actually propagated this and there's like a bushy plant uh, downstairs but this is just not pretty looking. So this is basically my mama plant that keeps giving me babies. So I'm gonna keep propagating the babies off this. 
So yeah, and this is a little bit more pricey than your philodendron, uh, philodendron Brazil. I'm just gonna get super greedy. I'm gonna cut it right up, up there. Okay, so that's the mama plant again. She's gonna recover, she's gonna bush out a little bit, and she's gonna forgive me <laughs> for taking so many cuttings off her. But I guess that's what plants want to do. They wanna be multiplied. So I'm sure they enjoy being cut. Because every living thing, if you think about it, their sole purpose in this world, sadly speaking, is to procreate and to survive and to thrive and to evolve, I guess. We want to be the next supreme being <laughs> in, this, in this world. So I give it some fresh soil and it's, it's, yeah, this is looking pretty now after the haircut. As for the cutting, I'm actually very greedy. I usually cut them um, in the single note. I see that the aerial roots have dried up, which means that I'm actually a little bit worried. And if the plant already has like an aerial root like this, I may actually just stick it straight into the soil. And when you have dried up aerial roots like this, don't go straight into soil. You need to go into water first. This is gonna give me so much plants. I don't even know what to do with them. I just really enjoy multiply them. It, make, it, it gives me so much peace when I'm uh, I'm cutting these up when I'm propagating and when I know what I'm doing is gonna benefit the species and it's gonna bring myself and maybe the people who I'm gonna sell or give this cutting to uh, they're gonna have such a good experience with this plant and yeah it can it can live in so many people's homes and hearts maybe <laughs> so the aerial roots are gonna you know kiss the uh, wet surface like uh, the media and then it's just gonna root itself however like I said if there's no aerial roots to begin with the, the chances of a surface contact is so small that the plant may dry out and die so yeah with that this is why we want to keep some of them in water propagation instead the micans love being propagated this way because I've had micans propagated in regular soil and water and also in this arid mix and the ones that are propagated straight into this arid soil took off like crazy so yeah there's proof of that okay my next project is this uh philodendron pink princess and um it's it used to have a, ver a bit of variegation but then as the new leaves grow the variegation is completely gone but i see that in the new leaves here that some variegation has returned like little specks of it and th there's actually a new leaf coming out so what i'm going to do is uh i mentioned this in my other video but i procrastinated is that i'm going to actually cut this up into pieces and grow them as different plants so that they'll all give me a chance of, of variegation returning. So I'm not betting all my horse on one plant, I'm, I'm betting it on like five or six different plants. So that's what I'm gonna do. However, I see that they are, this is coming up with a new leaf and this is actually a pretty fast grower. So if I cut it right now, the new leaf will probably die off. It will not serve up. And I can see it's a healthy leaf. And it's gonna be even bigger than the, this last leaf here. So I'm gonna give it a chance to grow. But meanwhile, I can actually do something to prepare this uh, plant for uh, propagation so I can actually air layer it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a bonsai wire. Oh, I mean, you need a, a bigger one. So this is longer. So I'm going to stick this here uh, and then I may actually we carefully put this uh, plant in here. So it's, it's giving it some kind of support because it, it is actually flopping over and philodendrons want to climb onto something for the most part. So yeah, now, this, now it, as you can see, it's already standing up on its own. So I'm gonna squeeze the, the bonsai wire a little bit tighter, carefully without damaging the nail leaf or the aerial roots. Because I prepared uh, some sphagnum moss. I've actually um, soaked them in water, so I, it's moist now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just start, I'm gonna start to wrap this uh, plant with sphagnum, sphagnum moss. Uh, around that structure that we built and this way uh, the, the aerial roots will be encouraged to grow and it will grow into this uh, moist sphagnum moss uh, when you do that um, when you have more roots uh, established and you cut up the plant later it's it's a faster and more safer way to propagate because you're you're almost guaranteed to have a, su a successful rooting of the plant of the cutting and the way that I would water this is that I would have to spray this down almost every day, I guess, with water. Spray this sphagnum moss to keep it nice and moist. And the good thing about sphagnum moss is that it, it 
keeps a very humid and damp environment in there, but it also dries up relatively fast. So there's some airflow going on. So you're not really gonna root, you're gonna, gonna really rot the plant. Take a bit of twine um, and I'm just gonna tie it. So this is to make sure that the sphagnum moss is a little bit secure and it's not, uh, it's not gonna be flying around because actually when you have dry sphagnum moss and the wind blows, it's just gonna fly all over the place. So yeah, I'm gonna just very, I'm just gonna MacGyver it <laughs> basically. I, I, have, I, have, I haven't done this before. Normally I would just wrap it in sphagnum moss and leave it be uh, because I'm lazy, but this is the first time I'm doing this, I guess. And it makes a lot of sense to be securing the sphagnum moss. Yeah, and then I, I, I think when this leaf comes out, I'm going to leave it on until the... Uh, I'm going to wait two more leaves before I cut this plant up. Because I really want to give the aerial roots some time to, to form here. It's like bondage pink princess. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> How nice. <laughs> I think it's going to be very comfortable. It looks kind of cool too this way. So yeah, give it time. I'll update you guys on how this is doing. Next, I'm going to do this Aglionema Pictum Tricolor. I've had this for a very long time, one of my very first few plants. And this is actually the main stem that I got it from. The rest of the shoots here uh, are actually new. So, so this did not exist. So this is quite a fast grower uh, in my care. I let it dry out between watering and I fertilize it lightly. And this keeps flowering. So, but it's weird for me to see this giant, uh, <laughs> very leggy uh, Pictum Tricolor. So I'm going to actually cut this off. And then when I know that when I do that, the bottom here is, may branch out. So let me, let me do that. I've been wanting to do this for a long time too. So I'm going to cut it maybe right here. Yeah, and then I'm going to root this. So uh, I may do some, oh, I forgot to mention that by the way, this morning I, I watered this plant. So before you do any propagation, you definitely want to water it and actually lightly fertilize the plant so that for a few hours, the plant gets to absorb the water and the nutrients and it's really full, so it's happy right now. So when I cut it, this has a high chance uh, of survival because it's got a lot of energy in there. And I want to, I want to try something too. So I can see that there's actually a lot of like nodes here where things are going to grow and there's actually a lot of uh, sections here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find a younger shoot here because I think that will give me the best chance of rooting. So I'm going to cut it right here. Oh, oh my God, which way is up? I can't remember. Uh, okay. I think this way is up. Hang on. Is it? I, the reason why I need to know which way is up is because uh, I want to plant this stump also into the soil to see if this will grow into something because you know, it may throw out new roots and some shoots as well. So this will be a very good experiment. I believe that, yeah, I think the, the, the wider part is going to be facing down. Uh, with my previous plant, I actually had it in, a very, in my general purpose uh, potting mix and it loved it. So I'm going to give it the same soil mix. There you go. So it's very simple. What I'm going to just do is I'm just going to, um, if it has too many leaves for aglonemas, you actually do want to take off some of the lower leaves because they will drain energy and the leaves will die. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to keep it here. I think, I think there's not that insane amount of leaves in here. Uh, so I'm going to put it here and with the stump. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go super greedy. I'm going to cut this into three sections. I'm going to, <laughs> little science project. So I'm going to see if this will grow or not. Some of you already know the answer, so you can whisper it to me in the comments down below. But Aglonemas are actually very slow growers, so if they do root and successfully uh, grow, it will take a long time. So, And you want to make sure again that you're not putting this uh, upside down into the soil, because that's not funny if you, the, the plant is trying to grow and it's like you're growing deeper into the pot. It's kind of hilarious actually. So yeah, now I have uh, quite a few plants. And when these grow uh, bushy and throw up new pups, I'm actually also going to keep propagating them because these pet plants actually fetch quite a price and they're quite beautiful and very uh, relatively easy aglonema to grow. So I may actually sell some of these cuttings. I don't know, let's see. Okay, I'm making a mess here. I guess next I'm gonna do this philodendron 98686 and it's got like a really phallic looking shape to it, uh, which is why I've chosen this pot. I got this from a, a pot maker in Bali. 
uh, I took a, a pottery painting workshop there a while ago. So yeah, they're very, very cool people. Uh, the dad's the ceramic artist and the daughter is also helping to run the business and they're doing some creative things with pottery. So do check them out. I'll send the link uh, down below. <laughs> yeah, so this penis thing is going on the <laughs> on this part. Uh, I actually bought this in a, in, in, I haven't repotted it since I got it. So I'm curious to see what the roots look like down there. And I'm actually going to propagate this into multiple plants. And this is because, number one, they do fetch a bit of price. Um, and number two, as you can see here, it's got so many aerial roots already and it's ready to be propagated. And it's trying to find something to grip onto. And if I put a moss pole now, these aerial roots are not going to grip onto the moss pole because they're already a little bit old. So yeah, I'm going to cut this to a few plants. Uh, so let me take this out of the pot first to see what the roots look like. And I'm going to place the main uh, plant parrot back in here. More crunchiness, I hear. Uh, this tends to happen with terracotta pots. I don't know why this is giving me such a hard time. <laughs> Cause, okay, there you go. Now it's out. I guess, uh, let me see. Did I do any damage? Did I cause anything to break? Nope, this stem is all right. Yeah, we're, we're okay. We're good. <laughs> I'm just, do, try not to disturb any root system and just kind of keep it. Ooh, something fell on me. I don't know what happened. That was creepy. Okay. Um, yeah, actually, you know what? Hang on. Um, when you put this in this pot, the, all the aerial roots get buried anyway. So I may not, no, I may not propagate this. I, I'm going to give it some time. I know that the leaves can get huge. So when you do this, as you can see, a lot of the aerial roots can actually be planted right into the same planter. And it's a perfect size because it's like, uh, it's like oval uh, in shape. So I'm going to do that. This is uh, working out really well for me. Oh yeah, this is a really tall pole because I'm really invested in this plant. It's a very fast grower in my experience. Uh, maybe the grower had put it in a very good medium with good nutrients. So it, it took off very fast in my, in my care. And I'm very grateful for that. So um, hang on, let me play around with the area roots. It's wrapping around the pole. Yeah, and there we go. There we go, nice and easy. I'm very happy with this uh, with this uh, arrangement. Look at how cute that is. This is just so beautiful. This is the perfect pot for it. Of course, everyone's gonna laugh at it. So this plant is gonna be, as I mentioned before, this plant has grown so well, but it's gonna do even better if you give it some time. This is gonna be insane. And I'm done. <laughs> very cute. <laughs> Okay, so I've actually added one plant here that I just discovered. Uh, I was inspired by my previous repotting that this could use a really tall pot. Let me show you because this has so many aerial roots here that if I bury all these, this is going to establish into a bigger plant. Also, it needs a moss pole. It means still firm right now, but at some point it's going to flop over if I don't do something about it. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to do this one next. I hope it's easy to take off from the pot. Let me try to see, because it's terracotta. So it looks really firm in there. Um, move this away. Yeah, this is jammed really tight in there. And it may even be very root bound. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Do I want to? I don't want to break this pot, but I may have to. Yeah, this is not coming up because the pot is shaped this way. So it's the, the lip of the pot is actually smaller than the body. So I don't know how I can uh, do that. There's so many roots in there. Yeah, I may have to break this. I may have to break this pot. Okay, I'm just going to drop this. I'm going to drop this on the floor. All right, three, two, you know, <laughs> one. There you go. Oh, I'm so sorry, little pot, but this is so root bound in there. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Look at all these roots. Uh, yeah, there's no way I could get this out of the pot without damaging the, the roots. But it's going to be happy in this new situation, I'm pretty sure. Do we like this? I don't know. Hang on, let me look at it. It's not a bad look. 
I can live with that. <laughs> I'm really happy with this because I know that these area roots are going to turn into real roots. I don't know if that's the right word for it. Uh, yeah, it's going to turn into roots and it's going to establish this plant even more. Uh, and it's gonna, it's a relatively fast grower for me. It puts out new, a new leaf every three weeks or so. And I can actually water this every day again because the water is gonna go right through the media. It's gonna drain very quickly. It's not, and especially in this terracotta pot, it's not gonna hold any moisture at all. So, this way of uh, watering, uh, or rather the combination of soil and watering, it, it works really well for me and a lot of my philodendrons. Like we're both happy because I'm, I, I get really stressed out when I have to like guesstimate or figure out if it's dry in the pot or not. Uh, so I have to lift the pot up or figure out, either, you know, look at visual cues or take out my moisture meter. And this just takes too much time. Like my calathes and begonias right now, they're going through some problem because I, I, I just water them every day now and they're, they're dying. They're getting overwatered. So I'm actually, for the last few days, I have been pruning the yellow leaves off and I've been, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I've been backing off with watering. I aerate the, their soil with, with my moisture meter to give them to let them dry out faster because I noticed it's soggy wet in in the in the in the pot. So I may actually repot all my calatheas or something. But um, let me let them recover a bit first. And I'm also I also have so many projects right now. Like I don't want to take on another one. Yeah, I love them so much. But calatheas are truly like uh, drama queens. They, they demand so much attention. All right. Yeah, this pot is a little bit big for my liking, but I know that this plant will grow into it, I think. Like, it's gonna push out so many new, uh, uh, bigger leaves. Can, this one can get really huge, by the way. This is not even a, 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 a adult size leaf yet. And I know that maybe when it gets big to a certain point, I can cut it back and let it bush out. So it may have a lot of branches coming down from below. So that could be a very cool look for this plant. And I definitely want to consider um, taking some cuttings later to sell them because this will also fetch quite a bit of price. I bought this when it was still very affordable in the beginning of this year before the pandemic. So there you go. Ah, heavy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> this video is going to be like an hour long. I'm so sorry. Um, I guess, you know, I'm going to do this one first. So I just bought this. I know that. <laughs> Oops. You did not see that. Anyway, I'm gonna go get it. No, I'm gonna go under. Sorry. This is so. I'm so sorry, Mr. Whatever you are. I think this is an Allo hybrid. So I was gonna say that I just bought him uh, yesterday. I know that I have too many plants and I shouldn't be buying anymore. But I bought some plants. <laughs> and there's a sedum. Uh, leaf in here it, it's a stowaway i guess so i'm glad i found you this i don't know what this is going to turn into let's just go in there very healthy root system and that goes in there and now i have to get some so i'm going to just use whatever's on the table for now so this is going to need a, a pretty fast draining soil but aloes are actually quite easy they're not that difficult you just need to adjust your watering schedule accordingly but i didn't notice that there's actually a lot of crushed up seashells here that's really interesting and some like some weird pumice type rocks and sand and yeah there's some coral pieces gotta see color here which is really weird i guess i mean i guess that makes a pretty good medium here too because um it's uh very uh it doesn't hold on to moisture at all, which is what these uh, succulents like. I don't know if, if you would consider aloe a succulent. I guess you would. Um, but also, it may provide some calcium over time. It may break down. So that's at least my guess, my nerdy guess, but I might be wrong. And also, it adds a bit of nice uh, maybe color or texture in the soil. I don't know. I'm just talking to myself at this point. But I, I, I'm kind of surprised by the, this media and it's... It's looking cute in there, with the broken uh, shell piece, shells in there. Um, and the reason why I got this plant, actually, is because 
my sister is uh, super obsessed with pineapples and I found this pineapple planter in the shop yesterday and then I started looking around for plants that might uh, that might fit the aesthetic and as you can see this now looks like a pineapple how cute I love it it's amazing let me shake this in a bit ah, this can use a little bit more soil Yeah, and I want to make sure not to overwater this. I'm, I tend to overwater things, so I, I just really need to back off because I really love this pot combination. Uh, yeah, so this is dedicated to my sister. Um, so this is a philodendron soderoi, and it's weird. I, I don't know if it's variegated or not, but the last few leaves were kind of variegated with yellow specks. But I suspect, I was actually very excited, like, ooh, did I get a variegated plant out of this? Because the bottom leaves are actually green. But I suspect that maybe the variegation is only temporary because I think they do fade back to a green. But I'm not sure. I, I really am not. But this is bothering me. Like, I know that they can get huge leaves, but the leaves hasn't increased in size and it's like wonk wonking off to one side. So it needs something to climb on. So I'm going to give it something. All right. So next, I need to figure out where my pole needs to be because this is a square, uh, a square pot. I guess it's okay. I'm going to ro rotate this out a bit. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think I quite like this look. I'm gonna have this on this corner. Okay, that looks amazing. And um, actually, the area roots is really dry on this uh, plant. Maybe because it didn't have anything to hold to grip onto. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, start to tie this uh, in sections onto the pole where the area roots is kissing with the moss pole. And then um, I'm going to have to mist it very, very often. Whenever I walk by it, I'm going to have to mist it so that the area roots will form and grip into the moss pole. And then when you have a lot of area roots that are gripping onto this, the new leaves are going to get bigger and bigger. So if you want to know the secrets of getting bigger leaves, that's, that's one of them, just so you know. It's got nothing to do with fertilizing. Uh, it's got to do with the right kind of uh, the sunlight watering and also letting it climb up. It needs that for, for it to produce bigger leaves. This applies to nearly all the philodendrons, by the way. Okay, I'm going to tie this. Uh, I like to do one bunny ear loop on, only on one side just so I can take it off easily because I, don't, I can still use a string for something else later and you, you want to be very tight but you don't want to you don't want to constrict the the plant there you go. I'm gonna have so much fun misting this plant because I know that it's gonna take off after after it's been uh, it attaches itself to this moss pole but also keep in mind, actually, when you put a moss pole on a plant, it loses some of the sunlight that it's getting. Imagine if you're the leaf and you're, you got a, a good view of the sky and suddenly you have like this tower, uh, the structure of tower blocking one side of your view. You lose like maybe 25% of your light actually with the moss pole. So just be mindful of that. Very, very cute. And we are almost there. There's this, uh, I don't know, I forgot the name of this plant, but I think it's <laughs> my microphone wire is like caught on my legs, my feet. Um, this is a very fast grower for me. I forgot the name of the species. It's related to the string of hearts, if I'm not wrong. Wait, or string of pearls. I can't remember. I'll put a name on the screen. So this is sold as a variegated ivy, but it definitely has nothing to do with ivy. It's got succulent-like -like leaves. I water this every day. They're very thirsty because it's so big and it's, got, it's in a tiny pot and it propagates very easily. Any branch that touches the soil is going to propagate itself into the soil. So I'm actually trying to figure out how I'm going to propagate this. Uh, give me one second. Uh, I've done it in water before. Actually, this is rooted in water. This is, came from a cutting. So, but I also feel like they will do well uh, straight into soil. This is one of those plants that are just, that's just really wild. They want to take over. I'm going to be back. I'm going to, I'm going to untangle this first. Hang on. So actually, uh, I untangled it and I made some cuts because I knew that if I didn't cut it on the spot, it's just going to tangle up again. So here's the parent plant. And as you can see, there's some vines that are just looping around and it's back into the pot. So I'm going to keep this parent plant. I know it's going to survive. 
I don't can't say that I particularly love this plant because it grows so fast, it's so out of control. And I know that I love all plants, I say that many times, but I don't know, something about this one, it's just like, it's cute, but I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> so I don't know what I'm, why I'm propagating it, I guess I'm experimenting to figure out uh, how this propagates. Uh, it's, I think it's in the succulent family. So something tells me that this propagates relatively easily. So I'm gonna try a few methods here for you guys. I just, it just crossed my mind as I was tangling it. I had some time to think and ponder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna propagate this different ways. Um, let me try to think. For the first one, I'm gonna try to do uh, just per section, per node. I'm gonna stick that into soil. So let me do that right now. Again, previously I've uh, rooted this in water with a lot of success, but that takes so long and I have a feeling that this plant doesn't need a lot to propagate itself. It's such a weed. So basically what I'm doing, I'm just cutting off like little sections with the main stem and just sticking it back into the saw and seeing what happens to it. And sometimes if I have like a, a big piece like that with baby leaves, I'm just gonna maybe take off one of the leaf below and I'm just gonna stick that into the soil. So let's see if this uh, grows into something or if it rots off, I don't know. I guess we'll, I'll update you, we'll find out. Or you can ask me, because I don't think I'm, uh, unlike my other videos where I do a lot of updates, I don't think I'm gonna do an update on this one only because a lot of the things we do today is like a, a very maniacal, like daily task. And I know that they're gonna take off. So I'm not even questioning that. Except for this one, of course, this is a little bit crazy. So if you're interested to know if this happens, uh, if it succeeds or not, DM me in a few weeks and I'll let you know. All right, so that is, so yeah, this is done. I'm gonna just leave that here. Uh, I have two more plants, hang on really quick. This is the skeleton key. So I got this in this little cup. Uh, I'm gonna take it out. And it, um, the new, the old leaf, this is where the cutting come from, is like this stingray shape. And this is what the skeleton key is known for. Let me show it here. But um, the new, the old, uh, sorry, the baby leaves are, don't have that tail yet, or some of them do. So the, as you let it climb up, it's gonna start forming uh, this really cool shape. So I'm gonna let it do that. It, need, it needs a pole to climb onto. So I've, I've had this for about four or five months. I, I can't remember. And it, it started with only one leaf, so <laughs> this really has taken off. And I prepared a moss pole for it. So what happens is that when I have this excess uh, uh, white uh, section here, I'm going to cover it. You know what, I'm gonna do it right now, and it's going to take a while. So I may actually, uh, I may actually fast forward this project. So there you go. So what it is, what I, I just took the cotton uh, twine and I just looped it round and round and just kind of tied it into a dead end so it's like nicer. So yeah, I don't have like a white PVC pole that's like sticking out and it's not long enough, but you know what? I'm tired, so I'll settle with what I have. So I'm gonna just uh, pop this guy out. Again, and this is an aeroid, this is a philodendron. So I'm gonna give it an aeroid soil mix. Actually, where possible, I'm actually going to bury it a bit deeper if possible. Whoa! <laughs> I'm making a huge mess today. Okay, so the next project is going to be a little bit interesting. So I have this variegated syngonium. It's so beautiful. And I must say, like, the variegation on this and the shape and form of this plant it's probably better than the variegated monstera because first of all, it grows really fast. It's very stress-free. And the randomness of the variegation is just so stunning. Um, yeah, so what happens is that this has grown out of control and I've propagated him uh, and I have some living elsewhere. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this up because look, if you look at this, they have so much aerial roots in here. Like this is a plant that is asking you to be, to propagate it. It's asking to be propagated basically. Um, so yeah, I'm going to propagate this into different plants. I'm going to pot them up. And this is, doesn't even need to go into water. I can tell that this can go straight into the soil. And what I'm going to do is 
I'm actually going to sell these cuttings. So this will be my first ever plants that I'm, I'm, I'm selling. So I'll, I'll post this on Instagram soon. And I'm gonna pot this up into uh, uh, little pots. I'm gonna maybe do uh, two cuttings per pot. So yeah, and I'm gonna tell you why I'm selling this. And it's a pretty interesting and long story. So I'll do that while I am cutting this up. So I'm gonna cut this. I, I'm, a, I'm actually keeping some of the parent plant material. So I'm not gonna cut it all off. Um, hang on, let me focus first. I can't, I can't talk while I... <laughs> I'm terrible at multitasking. So I'm gonna cut it right here. Okay, hang on. Bear with me, okay. So that's uh, one. And here, uh, let's see, I'm gonna take this. Uh, this is actually very, very uh, easy to grow. Um, give it bright indirect light. If you give it a darker light, it's not gonna die, but it's gonna lose its variegation. And syngoniums are so forgiving. <laughs> they uh, they like to be moist, I would say, uh, although they can stand a bit of overwatering. Uh, generally speaking, syngoniums can also handle a dry period. They tend to like to be a bit more moist though. So keep it a little bit on the moist side. However, I did notice that with the variegated ones, if you dry them out too much, the variegation, you're gonna get some browning on the white areas of the variegation so if you want to prevent that make sure that you're not letting this dry out too com too completely i don't know if i'm making sense the soil mix that i'm going to give it is very very uh, fast draining general purpose soil and i know that this works on all my syngonium so i know whoever is getting these plants from me they're going to have a, a great success with this plant so um yeah so as you can see i'm going to take two cuttings and i'm going to just stick it into soil so it's very very easy uh brainless task it's not brain surgery <laughs> um yeah, so the reason why I'm, I'm actually going to start getting rid of some of my plants, I'm going to start selling my cuttings. First of all, because I have way too many plants and I can't keep track of them anymore. I, I love them and I'm sad to part with them, but they're just becoming too hard to manage. And that parent plant is, is super bald now, it's so cute. Um, that was too out of control. Like I have so many of these, I don't even know what to do with them. Uh, that it's just stressing me out to have them around. And Secondly, I, I love doing this propagation. So I love multiplying the plants. And the most important reason that, that I am actually uh, selling some of my cuttings now is because da -da -dum, I just had my tooth removed. One of my to uh, teeth or tooth? What is the singular of it? Um, so I've been battling with um, uh, a rot. So I've done a, a crown before. What is that? What is that process called? I forgot. Uh, a root canal. So I've done root canal before, and the infection came back. So now I had to have it removed, and I have to have my implants done. Who have like soil in my eyes? And when when you have implants done, it's actually super crazy expensive. My God, it's like you can down payment for an apartment with with the with the root canal. So with, no, with the with the dental implants super crazy so I'm in need of cash soon um, and also uh, just wanted to let you guys know that you need to take care of your teeth like I actually I, I don't know if you heard me ramble on before in my previous videos but I keep telling people how busy I am I actually don't really make time for myself um, and I don't really take care of myself as well as I should and sometimes I do skip on my um, on my uh, dental hygiene, especially in my younger years where I used to study a lot and I, I was working in fashion. So yeah, and I want to take this time to implore to you guys that dental hygiene is really important. And if you mess up your teeth, like the root canal actually costs a lot of money. And that really broke my bank when I did root canal a few years ago. But now it's gotten worse. Like with the implants, it's just, it, it just, Oh my god, I don't know what you, how pe most people can afford implants. It's just insane. Okay, this is not going to stand up on its own, so I need to figure out... I need to get it wet, so I'm going to... Uh, hang on, I'll be, I, I'll be right back. I need to spray this down with water. Hang on. Okay, I'm back with my trusted sprayer, and I do need the soil to be a little bit wet uh, in order for these cuttings to stay... stay... Uh, standing. Okay, hang on a second, let's spray this down. Yeah, now it's staying. 
That's very satisfying actually, the sound of the spray and, and hosing it down. Okay. <laughs> so I'm literally just cutting them in little sections like this and then sticking them into soil. And this should be a very fast grower. It should root and put out new growth relatively fast. Uh, I'm gonna have to bottom water this later just to make sure that all the moisture is even in the pot. And then I'm gonna have to wait, I don't know, I'm gonna wait until like the new shoot come up before I uh, announce the sales. Uh, because I don't want to sell you guys a cutting that is, hasn't even rooted or hasn't been established yet. So in my experience, I'm going to put an estimate of six weeks. That's probably how long it will take for, for something new, so like a new tiny shoot to appear. Uh, I don't really fertilize this at this time because it's dangerous to fertilize um, a cutting that hasn't fully rooted yet because the, the, the fertilizer may actually rot the the stem the cutting so i hope that you guys can also practice uh, propagation and also like potting up your plants you understand so much more about plant care when you pot up your own plants you understand the soil and how the water uh, moves around in the soil how this how the plant dries up all that good stuff oh my gosh oh there, there goes all my soil media that's everything it, it's gone I don't even know what to do with myself. I have to run downstairs to get more soil because that's... And I've got this much more cutting. And this is like making... I don't know what's wrong with today. What is wrong with me today? I don't know. And... Oh my god. Um, so now I have to clean my floor. It's really disgusting back there. And this uh, Philodendron Passizanum, which I haven't released a video of it that was propagated. This was in Lekka. So there's Lekka underneath all this soil. If you know what Lekka is, you'll know how frustrated I am with, with this right now. Of all the plants that it can fall off, the, the soil can fall onto, it falls on this. So you know what it's telling me to do? I'm going to take out this plant and I'm going to take it out of Lekka. Because again, actually Lekka does stress me out a bit because actually this is in a... Take it out actually for you. Oh my god, that's so good. It's like soil and there's water under there. Oh. That's so gross. Yeah, so there's a uh, Lekka balls in here and then there's a pot and this one is just full of water. So I don't actually know the level of the water in here, which is why it um, brings me anxiety. I, if this was a clear container and I could control the level of the water, I wouldn't mind Lekka, but it's happy in here because it's giving me a new shoot here. But I think, yeah, this is this accident is giving me a hint like to just not use Lekka maybe, just move it into regular soil. Yeah, sorry guys, I'll be back. I'll, I'm gonna make more soil. I actually have to run to my event. I have a soap bazaar happening now and I'm, I don't wanna be late. So yeah, this is... All right, so I'm back uh, with some fresh soil. I got a few minutes to take a few deep breaths and try to calm myself down. And you probably can hear from my voice now that I'm still a little bit agitated, irritated. Um, I guess the universe is trying to tell me a few things. Number one, repot this uh, Plumaniae out of Lega. I guess this is number one. And number two, I think it's trying to tell me to open a YouTube studio. I need to stop building. This is too cramped for me. Like I can't, I don't know. Uh, what do you guys think? Let me know. But yeah, uh, I'm gonna just focus on what I have on hand. Try to not rush myself. I know I'm late. And to my business partner, if you're seeing this, you know why I'm late today. We're supposed to pack out of the event. So today's like the day where we move out of the, the bazaar. Um, of course, I have to clean this up soon too, because if I don't clean this up before I leave, uh, and if ra it rains, it's going to get muddy here. So I need to really, really get on my hands and knees and clean, like move my plants out of the way and yeah, and sweep up that soil the floor I think a lot of you are watching this and thinking like I probably have people who, who clean my things up for me but I don't I clean everything on my own I 
I plant everything on my own. I, I, I pot everything up by myself too. So I have nobody else. And I do enjoy this process. Again, as I mentioned earlier, this is also part of my problem. I, I have a problem delegating my work to somebody else and I need to learn. I think in order to be happy, we need to find balance. And sometimes that balance is to hire people and get people to, to help me with my work. Um, oh, by the way, with syngoniums, if you let it uh, climb up, you give it a pole and you let it attach to the pole with the aerial roots, it'll get huge leaves. And in fact, the leaves are going to split because it's triangular, so it's going to split into three leaves. It's going to be really wicked. However, if you let it trail down, it's going to get smaller and smaller leaves. So you get to choose how you want your destiny, <laughs> the destiny of your your uh, syngoniums to be. Or you can do both. If you have like a, a few cuttings, you can experiment with both growth uh, types. This one's really funky. It's got so many roots. Amazing. Wow. And it's beautiful leaves. <laughs> I'm going to show it to the camera here. And it's going to focus. So nice. All right. So let me see how many pots do I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Exactly ten pots. So yeah, let's see how I uh, sell them in a few weeks. I keep knocking into plants behind me, so I hope I don't like damage some leaves. Uh, yeah, very healthy roots actually. Really happy. Ooh, wait. Oh, I see one growth point and there's another one down here. How cute. I'm so glad I took him out. <laughs> very cute. Yeah, hang on. I'm going to find a, the a pot for it. Here we go. Yeah, I guess it's becoming apparent from here that I'm really not a big fan of Lekka. I mean, I'm, I meant that with no offense, offense to people who are diehard Lekka people because there are a lot of benefits to using Lekka, but it's just, I guess every pet parent is different. Um, and I like to keep things natural, first of all, like, I don't know, I'm a nerd. Like, I like to see where the plants grow in nature and how I can replicate their conditions in my home. I like to see the different soil types that will work for them. Also, I love watering them. I spend hours a day just watering my plants and you can't really do that with Lekka. You just kind of stare at them and you just kind of worry about them, but you can't really do much about it. You just make sure that the, the soil has some water in it. So that's the difference. If you're like a, a chill pet parent, you don't want to constantly baby your plants. You want to just you want to travel often. Uh, yeah, go ahead and, and use like, oh, and if you want something to, if you want to pass free, not completely pass free, but generally speaking, like less pests, Definitely, Lekka would be a good setup for you. I like dealing with pests, by the way. I like playing with them. I like to... <laughs> I like to treat my plants for pests. I don't know why. It makes me feel useful. And a lot of the plants that have recovered from pest uh, pressures, usually they come back with so much vigor. Yeah, I don't want to make sure I'm not squashing the little uh, growth point there, <laughs> the second growth point. Uh, the Palmania is a very, very slow growing philodendron, just so you know. Very, very slow. And there you have it. I think, um, yeah, I'm done with this video and I, I need to go. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm at Botanist on Instagram. If you want to follow me or if you have any questions about propagation and care, do DM me there. Uh, like this video, subscribe down below, comments, and let this will let YouTube know to uh, recommend my video to other plant lovers who hasn't found me yet. Uh, meanwhile, do take care and stay safe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.